so far, we have uh, learned to ride the wave, not fight the riptide, and to be the lion. And we're working on treating stress with uh, with a mindset of acceptance and and using our anxiety, using our stresses for good, for positivity where we can. And we're going to continue that today talking about training for resilience. So we don't want to be experiencing low level stress all the time. This is not what the human body was built for. Uh, we weren't built to be hanging out in yellow all the time. We were built to experience acute red distress and then recover afterward with some green, um, some, some relaxation in the mind. And we can't get into that recovery unless we put our bodies through a positive stress experience. And even just a short one will do the trick, it turns out. So we really are going to be training our, our selves, our minds and bodies for resilience, for that recovery response. And we're going to do that together today. Talk about it. The most well-known and well-researched way to do this is through exercise. Um, and so my favorite dinos are back here uh, talking about how much they hate running, um, but it's so good for you, says the red dino. And it is true that, you know, that this is a way that we train for resilience, that we intentionally put our bodies through stress in order to get that recovery response going. This is how we build muscle. This is how we quote unquote, get in shape. Um, and we, it turns out we don't have to you know, go on a, a, a marathon of a run in order to do this. We want to expose ourselves to some brief shots of stress. This is probably the only time you'll hear me positively say the word microdosing because we want to microdose our stress so that you can then metabolize the stored stress out of your body. What we're training here, the muscle we're building is that resilience muscle, is that recovery muscle. Um, and the physical exercise, like I said, it doesn't have to be a marathon. It can be short bursts. And you're probably seeing out there um, in the news media some information about some studies that have recently come out. And so they're making the rounds um, uh, in, the, in the news and in, in pop psychology articles and things like that around uh, you know, what these doses, what the appropriate dose of exercise as, as stress for your body are. And, and it turns out it can be quite short. Um, I'm not an exercise scientist, and I certainly encourage you to always check with your primary care physician before engaging in any sort of new exercise or stressful activity. But if you go and, and look out there, there are you know, literally millions of these high intensity interval training or HIIT workouts. Those are like seven minutes. And they're the ones that most of these studies are using to show how good exercise is for us, both physically and mentally, because we often try to rely on our mind to think our way out of stress. I talk to my patients about not thinking their way out of a feeling problem, right? But the body is what is built to help us metabolize that stress. And here, uh, I thought this is appropriate graphic for us with our recent um, warm weather as well, because the other news that's been coming out is around, you know, cold as, as a way to, uh, you know, put ourselves through this small dose of of stress and then uh, recover from. And so, you know, I don't recommend you, you actually follow the dog's activity here and lay in a bucket of ice. And again, please consult your physician before you try this type of stuff. But, but if you, if you ice, if you get cold and your body and mind learn, because this is a physical and psychological exercise that you can recover from that and you do so quickly, you will, you will gain those, you know, resilience muscles, you'll, you'll have 
um, positive endorphins will be released. And the way that I've seen that is recommended to get into this, if you want to start doing cold plunging and using this ice as a way to put yourself through these you know, overcomable um, stressors, then you can do it in the shower when you shower, um, preferably with the ice and, and the exercise kind of induced stress as well. We want to do this toward the morning, like in that part of our circadian rhythm to set ourselves up for increased resilience throughout the day. Um, but yeah, you can do this in the shower where you take your regular shower and then maybe you turn the water all the way to cold. It's recommended that you start with really short amount of time, like 30 seconds just kind of talking yourself through it in a positive way and, and knowing that you're gonna get through it, you're okay. And then noticing what happens as your body warms itself back up and recovers. Do you feel energized and refreshed? Um, do you feel you know lifted, elevated, ready to take on the day? Um, this goes along with, uh, with breathing. Many of the studies that have been done on the cold water baths have been done in conjunction with a, with a hyperventilation type of breathing. And as we've discussed before, that physiological sighing exercise where I have you do the two inhales through your nose deeply, holding at the top and then exhaling has just as good of outcome as the hyperventilation and probably not as many of the side effects. So, so doing this cold bat bathing in addition to the breathing exercises is a way that we can put ourselves through this positive stress. And, and like I said, we wanna try to do that sort of at the top in, the, in our morning and our beginning of our circadian rhythm along with our natural light. And yeah, you know, just a little caffeine for me too. But, but so, so today it's about, you know, cold and, and seeing how that does for you. And if you're, if you, if cold is not your thing and you're not going to try it, then high intensity interval training and just one round, five, 10 minutes can really go a long way to, to, you know, kind of increase dopamine and have you, you know, give you that natural lift throughout the day.